How you doing? It's the week 14 waiver wire video. We're going to jump right in because I got a lot of shit to do. As always, we're going over to sleeper. We're looking at the trending tab, the most added players, the most dropped players, and we'll yap through both columns. Our rankings for the waiver wire this week are live, only available to our big dog members, bdge.co. You'll get our rankings positionally as well as flex, the amount of fab that we would spend on all these players, as well as our weekly rankings, the live stream that is private just to the big dog members every single Saturday where you can ask me, yo, sit starts. This is a big week. There's a lot of injuries going on here, so we'll just jump into the trending tab right away. Top of the list, my favorite player in the world is Parker Washington. I actually loved this kid coming out of Penn State. He reminded me a lot of like a, a worse route running version of um, – of Debo in a way he's like a more compact slot wide receiver a lot of you guys if you watched the game last night you kind of got introduced to Parker Washington but if you go back to any of my like dynasty rookie videos in the offseason Parker Washington was a dude that I was a really big really big fan of he kind of fell to the wayside underneath Jahan Dotson for a year or so because he was the one there of course but Parker Washington ended up getting taken by the Jags this year because Christian Kirk hurt his cock on the first catch of the game he stepped in and he played tremendously. I think he had like six catches, 60 yards or something. This is the reason I do it on this platform because we could just pop it up. Six catches on six targets, 61 yards, and a touchdown. Also had a, a, a big punt return or two, whatever, whatever, whatever. He's a very explosive playmaker-ish type guy. He's really good with the ball in his hands. He is a guy that excels against zone. And he's a guy that makes really, really tough catches. He has a, a lot of like Josh Downs to his game where it's like if you throw the ball to him, I believe he ranked second in the entire class coming into this year's draft in contested catch rate. I think Josh Downs was number one. Parker Washington was number two. So he's a really exciting player. If Christian Kirk misses time, I actually expect Parker Washington to be probably just as involved as he was in the game last night and tied with Zay Jones as the wide receiver two in the offense. So Parker Washington, don't let somebody else grab him if you're in a PPR league. Tough matchup against Cleveland, obviously, but they need to throw the ball somewhere. Keep on moving down. The obvious ad of the week at the running back position is Zeke. Ramondre Stevenson suffers a high ankle sprain. He's going to be out for a minute, maybe a couple minutes, maybe an hour, which in fantasy football terms means he's probably out for the rest of the season. Zeke gets all the touches. He's going to get all the carries. He's already been relatively involved in the passing game. So uh, Zeke should probably be prioritized if you need a number one uh, running back pick this week. So I would drop, you know, 20, 20 percent ish, 15 to 20 percent. You might have to drop more than that, uh, depending on your league mates and how much fab they have left. But he would be one of my number one priorities. The other one who's probably further down this list right here, Noah Brown. He's pretty highly owned already, 49 percent of leagues. But because of Tank Dell's injury, because he'll be out for the rest of the season, we've seen Noah Brown exploding games and they're going to need someone else besides Nico Collins to be able to do that. And uh, CJ Stroud has shown that he could make pretty much anyone pop. I can't imagine there's been a team with more receivers. Actually, someone should look this up. <clears throat> someone like me who does this shit for a living. I wonder what the record is for number of diff different receivers that have had over 150 yards receiving in a game in one season. Like Noah Brown had a, he had multiple games of over 150 yards this year, a 153, a 172. Tank Dell has had games of, oh, he never hit 150. He had 145 and 149. Nico Collins has gone way over 150. I thought they were going to have all three of those dudes, which I feel like might be a record for the number of receivers in a single season with games of over 150. But regardless, this is what happens. He's had multiple receivers with multiple games of over 140 yards. That kind of explosion can come at any time for a dude like Noah Brown, who is a deeper receiver. And he's kind of off people's minds because he didn't have a good game last week. But what's more encouraging is the fact that he played on 81% of the snaps after coming off of a multi-week injury. New York is a very tough matchup, obviously, but they get Tennessee two games out of the next four games, which is a mwah, premium passing matchup for fantasy wide receivers. And his A dot in this one was really, 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 really far down the field, which is the type of player he is, which is going to be conducive to fantasy points. So Noah Brown would be the wide receiver pickup of the week for me. If I'm trying to decide between Parker Washington, whatever, Tajay Spears would be top of the list. But Derrick Henry apparently, reportedly, consciously is not on the concussion protocol or not in the concussion protocol. He uh, somehow cleared it and, or I guess was never in it, was never tested or was never uh, ruled with a concussion. And he is not in the concussion protocol, which means he is in line to play and play his normal number of snaps on Monday Night Football. I will say, though, I'd imagine just how good Tajay Spears was in Derrick Henry's absence. I think he earned more playing time. So I think he's actually startable in like your flex spot, especially 
against Miami where Miami's probably going to score a ton of points against the Tennessee terrible passing defense, and they'll have to go into like hurry-up mode. They'll have to go into pass passing mode, and Tajay Spears obviously fits that bill a little bit more than Derrick Henry. And for those of y'all super flex players, we got Mitch, who's going to be filling in for Kenny Pickett. We got Jake Browning, who had a great game last night, and plays against Indianapolis next week, which is a great matchup. C.J. Bathard, if Trevor Lawrence misses time with his ankle, I don't know how severe it is. They play Cleveland, so I would not start him. I would not start Mitch Trubisky against New England on Thursday night. I like Jake Browning the most out of those three if he is available. Uh, Isaiah Likely is my favorite tight end pickup of the week. If he's still available on your waiver wire, I think he played fine last week, and they obviously need weapons in that passing game. Who else is available? Chase Brown played really well last night, but still Joe Mixon got all the goal line touches and out-snapped and out-carried him by about a bajillion. Brevin Jordan played well, but I think Dalton Schultz should probably be back next week. Elijah Moore is owned in 49% of leagues, but if he's not owned, him and Joe Flacco have a very clear uh, real chemistry there from their time back in New York. 12 targets, only had four for 83, but 12 targets is a welcome sight. And Joe Flacco, more importantly, just looked good. And it's a pretty good matchup against Jacksonville. They have a very tough run defense for the most part, but you could definitely throw the ball on them as evidenced last night by the Cincinnati Bengals. Um, so if Mark Cooper misses more time, I believe he's in the concussion protocol. So there's a very good chance he misses next week's game. Elijah Moore would probably be the number one target. We also saw Zay Jones return. Uh, yesterday, or at least returned on the box score yesterday. So maybe we can see him getting more targets if Christian Kirk misses time. Who else is lowly owned? Don't fall for the Alec Pierce bullshit. He had one good game for the first time the entire year. Joe Flacco is definitely someone I would pick up in super flex leagues. Roshan Johnson, only 32% owned, which is kind of crazy because he actually out-snapped um, Khalil Herbert by a long shot in their game prior to the bye. 74% of the snaps, 10 carries, five targets. Now it does get a little bit dicey. It's hard to trust them because any given week, it could be Khalil Herbert again. And Deonta Foreman is probably returning from his injury post by maybe not, but most likely. So um, you want to own Roshan Johnson. I don't know if I would recommend him to be a start this week though. Who else is less than 50% owned? Got Kenneth Gainwell. DeAndre Swift got a little fucked up at the end of the game. So if DeAndre Swift misses time, they do play Dallas, which is like an impossibly tough matchup for running backs. And we saw week one when DeAndre, isn't that crazy? Can we just like take a moment here? Philly just decided not to play DeAndre Swift at all week one. They were just like, we're not playing him at all. Let's give Kenneth Gainwell everything. He stinks, bro. So here's the thing. Like, even if DeAndre Swift misses time, I can't imagine I would rank Kenny Gainwell any higher than like the RB25 or 27 on the week, which might, you know, grace some people's lineups, but it ain't going to be me. Everyone else is over 10% owned. I think Tucker Craft is a pretty viable pickup at the tight end position this week, given Christian Watson's injury again and Luke Musgrave obviously out. So he'll get a bunch of targets. Tanner Hudson, decent tight end pickup as well. And the only other one is Jameis Winston. I don't think Derek Carr is going to play. They play Carolina, who statistically doesn't give up a lot of points to the QB, but that's only because everybody runs the ball against them because they get up by 7,000 points. So Jameis Winston is another priority pickup in super flex leagues. So a lot of QB2 options available if you are hurting at that position going into the playoffs. Let's move over to the other side. You can obviously drop Tank Dell because he is not playing for the rest of the season. You could drop Juwan Johnstein. All these tight ends are kind of the same. You could drop Greg Dortch. There are two buys this week. It is Arizona and Washington, so be cognizant of that. Um, I probably wouldn't drop Dearness Johnson, especially if I'm a Travis Etienne owner. He has clearly worked his way into the handcuff role. Fine dropping Samaje P. Ryan. You could drop Justin Watson. You could drop Jalen Guyton. Oh, Josh Palmer. He's another one not on the trending list, but I believe he should be able to return from the IR this week, and you could tell they so badly need a playmaker. So I'm telling you, please, please, please pick up and stash Josh Palmer of the charges. You could drop Tyler Higby. I wouldn't drop Josh Downs. Uh, Jahan Dotson, if you need a spot, I'm fine dropping him. They have a buy. So it's like, you know, now's, now's the time that we need to fucking push. We drop Royce Freeman. I would not drop Devin Singletary. I don't really know what's going on in that backfield, but they're going to swap back and forth. Uh, Zach Charbonnet. Okay, so he hurt his shoulder. I don't think it's that serious serious and Kenneth Walker should be very, very close to returning. If not this week, this is probably his last week that he's missing. So if by some miracle, Zach Charbonnet and Kenneth Walker uh, both miss, DJ Dallas would be the next targeted guy in the pecking order. But I do expect one, if not both of them to play. So I'm not overly like excited about that. You could drop Jeff Wilson. I'd probably hold on to Ty Chandler one more game just to see if that split moves in any other direction. I'm not dropping Marquise Brown or David Njoku. Demario Douglas is another one where I think we can probably touch on two players here. Um, if Demario, it's pretty, it's pretty obvious. If Demario Douglas, who's in concussion protocol, 
clears, he's the number one passing option there. If he doesn't, it's Devontae Parker. I actually started Devontae Parker in a PPR league, and uh, he got me double-digit points, so I was happy about that, and I think you could maybe play him. Pittsburgh is actually uh, becoming a pretty good defense right now, so it's not I think the over-under for that Thursday night game is like 30 fucking points, which is ridiculous. Uh, Devontae Parker could have had a massive game. He dropped one ball or stepped out of bounds on a, on a deep ball that he connected with Bailey Zappi with. So Douglas, I'm okay starting him. PPR scam if he's playing. If not, Devontae Parker's an okay, like low-end wide receiver three, wide receiver four type beat. Uh, let's look at the defenses, I suppose, for a second, because a lot of y'all probably stream. Uh, the Packers are my favorite defense to stream this week. They're playing... Against the Giants, they are six and a half point favorites. I don't typically like to take road teams. Oh, also Tyrod Taylor, I believe, was designated to return. So I don't know if he's going to play this week, but he probably should be back next week. So if you're already locked up for a playoffs and you need a QB3 or a QB2, you could probably stash him as well. So you have Green Bay, six and a half point favorites on the road. The Saints, I don't know. They're they're at home. I think they're five and a half point favorites. So they're definitely another option to stream. I like Indy. I do like Indy, but I don't like that. Uh, Cincinnati looked good on offense last night and Indy's on the road. I don't think they're that big of favorites, maybe three and a half points, four, four points, something like that. So not great. Baltimore's not streamable. They're owned in 80% of leagues. All right. I just be yapping at this point. I wanted to get this out to y'all quickly. Sorry. We were a little bit late on the video today, uh, but you could drop some comments. If you have any other specific questions that you want me to get around to, I will check them out bit by bit. Again, if you are looking for our waiver wire rankings, just nicely, completely organized for you fab suggestions positional rankings etc head over to bbge.co you can sign up to be a big dog we're out of here Bye.